My name's Guy Kesteven. I've been a professional bike and kit reviewer for nearly 25 years. And this is the Tech Talk round to go with the live ride review on Canyon's Lux Trail CF8 that I've just been riding up around here in the Yorkshire Dales. So Lux Trail, that means it's Canyon's Lux cross country bike with more of a trail bent to it. And in structural terms, that mean, that genuinely means you've got exactly the same flex stay pivot rear end as the uh, Lux XC bike that Matthew Van, Van der Poel, uh, Emily Batty and people ride on the World Cup circuit. And you've even got the same length shock. It's a 210 by 55 mil stroke. But changes on the linkage means it now gives 110 mil of travel rather than 100 mil of travel. But then what Canyon have done to make it into the trail version is put a totally new front end on it. So it's much longer. It's 30 mil longer on this large size with a reach of 480 mil. And the head angle is now slackened out to 67 and a half degrees with a 74.5 degree seat angle. So not too, not that steep. And as you can see, I've already uh, pushed the saddle forwards on the uh, seat post to try and compensate for that, give it a more aggressive climbing angle. And the other thing you have to take into account is you've got a really long, 508 mil seat tube on this bike so even with uh, only a 125 mil dropper post in there that's the only amount that's the only spare bit of post I've got showing uh, and I run a 745 mil uh, saddle to uh, bottom bracket axle height so that's potentially a uh, deal breaker in terms of sizing if you do want the longer reach and you haven't got particularly long legs uh, I'm 511 or 180 centimeters uh, so to be fair, Canyon would put me on a medium so I get the correct seat post sizing, but I know as Canyon obviously a direct brand rather than being available in shops, it's a little more difficult unless you catch them a demo day or you can go down uh, and find their uh, HQ and get a demo there. It's obviously harder to get proper sizing on the bike than it would be if you go for a bike that was available through a shop. The plus side of buying direct is you get spectacular value, value in it. terms of spec. So you're getting full SRAM axis wireless shifting and wireless deep reverb dropper post so a fantastic functionality on this kit uh, i've been running it for well over a year now super durable genuinely never skips a beat as long as you remember to charge those batteries up it's just been absolutely uh, well it's been flawless it genuinely has and uh, as you'll see on the live ride i've ridden it through streams snow ice all sorts of day and it hasn't just hasn't been bothered at all and uh yeah, so if you're worried about, I, I mean, I've reviewed that separately and I'll put the link in as a card here, but uh, genuinely, you know, in terms of cleanliness, in terms of ease of setup, and in terms of the information that you can now start getting back through the SRAM Axis app, it really is super impressive. Uh, you're also getting DT Swiss XRC uh, 12, 1501 wheels, so that's a carbon rim with a 30 mil internal diameter. So, so lightweight, super tough, uh, nice ride feel on them, and DT Swiss are just a super reliable brand to get wheels from. And then you've got a Maxxis Recon Race 2.35 rear tyre, and then a Maxxis Recon 2.4 Max Terra triple compound front tyre. So pretty much perfect tyres for slightly more aggressive cross country use, as you can see. Decent amount of tread on the front there, including some proper side knobs, and then a much faster rolling rear there. So, you know, again, like I say, you know, that in terms of the wheel spec, you couldn't ask for much more uh, on the bike. The only, the only slight glitch is the uh, rear hub, uh, although you do get top quality uh, DT Swiss 240 hubs, they are a little bit slow in terms of pickup. There's about a 10 degree lag, and you can sometimes feel that on technical climbs when you're trying to kick out of corners. It's just you know, you can feel it ratcheting along and there's a bit of a clunk when they actually uh, gauge. But in terms of the suspension, you're getting uh, RockShox Deluxe Ultimate. So interesting, you're not getting a SID shock, it's not the ultralight shock, but you are getting the top spec Ultimate damper on the back end. And that's remote controlled via this twist lock grip with a thumb release there. So it's easier to show on the fork, but there you go that locks in place and although I've had problems with that uh, twist lock in the past that's when it's been running Fox forks if you match it with a RockShox fork obviously it's a RockShox grip then uh, absolutely zero problems with that the only thing it does mean is you get metal handlebar ends on the grips which I know some people don't get along with but as you can see run the bar run the brakes a little bit inboard and uh, that brings your hands inboard as well so it's not an issue 
And the other thing to think about with handlebar clearance is, as it's a relatively low head tube, because obviously, you know, it is quite a racy frame still, uh, they've added this little locking system on the bars there, so that engages and stops the controllers smacking into the top tube if you run the stem with it pointed down and you don't have a spacer underneath it. With it flipped up like I've got it and a spacer underneath it isn't an issue so you can just unbolt that if you want to if you find it unsightly but I have to say you know it's a nice simple really fail safe system. There are a couple of bits of spec that uh, you might want to look at changing. Uh, it's an alloy bar, I mean it's fine, it's a race face ride, it's a fairly basic bar, it's a decent shape, 35mm uh, diameter. Uh, it is a little bit stiff, uh, you can definitely get more arm pump and more fatigue uh, out the front end, but the other reason for that is the fact that it's a relatively simple charger damper uh, in this SID Select Plus shot fork. It's not the SID Ultimate fork on the front of this bike, so they've definitely kind of invested more in that headline wireless technology than they have in having the best possible fork and again you know it's a perfectly decent fork it's still light it's 35 mil legs it's still pretty stiff but uh well, it's certainly stiff for its category but it is a, it's a bit more thumping and a bit more rigid when you really start pushing hard through stuff and also if you look down at the hubs although well, you get a max on the front to make wheel, wheel removal nice and easy and you can see you've got these straight pull spline hubs there's no uh, RockShox uh, oversized torque cap on the end, so there's not as much connection between the fork and the wheel as there could be, so that could be stiffer as well if they spec a slightly different version of the hub. But there's some really nice detailing going on in terms of the uh, frame. You've got nice. nice simple internal cable routing on the frame. It's well up towards the front, so there's very little danger of rubbing paint. Obviously, it's hidden in the top tube until it pops out there, and then it's hidden all the way through the frame until it pops out at the rear brake there. And then you've got these lovely tapering pivot free seat stays i mean that's where the flex in the back end actually comes from there's no uh, cartridge bearing pivot or anything like that adding weight or complexity and then you've got these big tapering chain stays as well with a uh, chain protector on the top and then this super neat uh, little chain keeper tab there uh, really really clever design actually sits on top of the main pivot just behind the chain ring there and it's just enough to stop the chain jumping off when you're getting really rowdy on the bike and as you see room for two full-size bottle cages on nearly all frame sizes on all frame sizes on all frame sizes apart from the small and then flipping around to this side you can see you've got this really neat long leverage uh, quick release uh, handle that pops out the 12 mil rear axle you've got a super neat flat mount uh, rear brake for the level TLM brakes it's only a 160 mil rotor on the back so not super powerful because that's basically a road brake but you do get a 180 mil uh, front rotor so there's a bit more power up front uh, one thing worth mentioning it, it is a uh, press fit bottom bracket in there it's not a uh, threaded bottom bracket so do keep an eye on any looseness developing the dub bottom bracket because uh, that's more likely to uh, cause an issue with the frame over time but as you can see you know nice easy access to uh, the main pivots, uh, nice big uh, five mil bolts on those as well. And actually this set, uh, the bolt that holds the rear shock into this yoke is actually an eight mil. So plenty of sturdy hard there, hardware there, nothing to worry about in terms of the fixings. And the other bits of geometry just to cover off, the wheelbase is 1201 millimeters on this large and it's a 435 mil rear chainstay length. And that's the same across all the Canyon Lux bikes. So uh, mid length chainstays, but as you can see, you know, plenty of room in there, even with a 2.35 tire. So you could easily go bigger or chunkier if you wanted to uh, without getting too clogged up. And talking of clearances, you've uh, got a 34 tooth chainring as standard. So again, that's a good reflection of the speeds you're likely to get up to on this bike. And actually, that's one thing I haven't talked about yet. Uh, overall weight for this bike is 12.15 kilos and Canyon quote a 1900 gram frame weight though I think that's without shock and fixtures on it so uh, it's always kind of hard to know exactly what uh, different manufacturers include when they talk about frame weights uh, so it's really the overall weight of the bike that's the most important thing uh, so rel you know, relatively heavy and you know there's not a great deal of weight you can pull out of the spec though on the plus side uh, if you did change the uh, SID damper to the Charger race day uh, that would save you a surprising amount of weight plus it would make for a more supple fork and if you swap to a carbon bar if you got the right one you could also get a more supple forgiving ride out of the bar so that would go a long way to reducing some of the arm pump and sort of fatigue issues I've had on longer rougher harder rides on this bike uh, which you can 
see uh, on the live ride review. So uh, please do make sure you watch the live ride review. Uh, it's you know it's an absolutely beautiful one. This shot up in uh, over on Nidderdale, uh, snowy, icy conditions, but with a fairly technical descent that really brings out the kind of pros and cons of this bike. You know because you know yes the value is brilliant and the numbers and everything seem to make sense in terms of a modern down country bike. There are some elements of the suspension and the overall ride uh, that are worth knowing about before you commit to buying this Canyon. So uh, thanks very much to Canyon for sending the bike in for test. Uh, thanks to Zero Cycling, uh, Crud and PTs for sponsoring the channel. Thanks to my Patreon subscribers who pledge a small monthly amount and they get exclusive early and extended edits ad free as a thank you. Uh, but thanks to you for watching. Thanks to you for subscribing, no, uh, clicking for notifications and giving this a thumbs up. Please tell your mates about it. Do make sure you watch that live ride review. Watch the reviews on the Spectral, on the Neuron and the Lux race bike itself because that hasn't actually changed at all uh, since I tested it in Dolby a long time ago. Uh, they've just updated some of the spec on it. And uh, keep your eyes peeled for what I expect to be some more interesting kind of lightweight trail, more down country releases from Canyon in the year coming up though that is just pure speculation i have to point out at this point uh, and also but the, you know you'll also find other bikes like the blur the top fuel uh, the scott spark and uh, hopefully some more you know similar category down country bikes uh, on the channel if that's the kind of riding you're into but for now i've been guy kestevan on guy kest tv talking about the canyon lux trail cf8 if you think i give a road review to every bike I ride, regardless, then you're really gonna wanna watch this one. <laughs>